If I were to tell each and every one of you to picture ancient Egypt in your minds, many of you would think of things like King Tut, pharaohs, the pyramids, maybe even like the Sphinx cat, but I'm sure none of you would picture in your minds people sitting around playing board games. Well, you have been misled, and that brings me to the Royal Game of Ur, which would fit right into that time period. So some basic information, it was created around the year 2500 BC, and it was actually discovered on the opposite side of King Tut's tomb, and along with it, there was a tablet that had cuneiform writing on it, and that was translated, which gave us the current rule set we have today. Um, the game, the Royal Lamb of Ur, comes from Ur, where it was discovered, but it is also called the Game of 20 Squares. And so it was first published after 1922, which um, Sir Leonard Woolley discovered it in 1922, brought it to the British Museum, where it still is today, and it was published shortly after that. So the basic gameplay is that it is a racing game and each player races to get their seven pieces across the board and off the board first. So you roll a die and or you roll some dice and what's interesting about this game is that say you roll a four, it doesn't mean that you move four spaces. For instance, it might mean you move two spaces and then you get to roll again. And if you roll a two, that may mean that you miss your turn and don't get to move any pieces. And so there are some other rules where if you land on a square where another piece is, you start over. And you have to roll a certain number to even be able to move your piece in the first place. So the main game mechanism in this game is obviously dice rolling. And the dice here are in a pyramid shape. And the little triangles on each edge is the number that you roll. And there are other parts of the game, like piece movement and the starting over penalty that I mentioned. And so these are implemented in other games. <clears throat> if you think about a game like Sorry, that uses piece movement and the starting over penalty. And then if you think about a game like Yahtzee, that uses dice rolling a lot. So do the game mechanisms in this game create interesting choices? All in all, no. It's mainly dice rolling which dictates the entire game, so there's not, min there's not much room for interesting choices for players. And so there, over time, there hasn't been many like huge changes to the game, um, like theme changes or huge um, changes like that that you typically see with board games. However, the reason that the rules I gave you for the game were so vague and broad is because there are many disagreements on the rules of the game. So when historians tried to translate that cuneiform tablet, no one could agree on what the rules actually were, and so there are a vast number of rule sets out there which makes it so difficult to understand how to play the game. So one disagreement that historians came to was on the path you actually take around the board. So there are many historians with their own ideas as to how you're supposed to move around the board. Instead of explaining in great detail to you each and every one of the paths you could take around the board, I'm going to rather show you. So in this one you see you go up, around, back down. This one um, each player would go around the edges of the board. And then this one is kind of similar to the first one, but as you can see, as you can see, you cross over back around till the game ends. And so another disagreement that historians had was obviously over the rules itself. And again, I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty details of each and every rule set out there because this is only four. It came from one source and there are many, many out there. But um, some disagreements they had Sorry. We're just over what the dice rolls mean, what the different um, pieces on the board mean. So there are just many disagreements over that. And it's hard to give a set rule set on this game because there are so many out there. So the original game was just a stone tablet. There would have been dice similar to the ones I showed you. And the modern game is more user friendly, nicer looking, just to modernize the game. But there have been no major changes to this. So to conclude, the Royal Game of Ur was one of the earliest board games and it paved the way, to soci or it paved the way for um, board games in society, society today. And to end with a quote by Kyle Jenny, the Royal Game of Ur, or Game of 20 Squares, was unearthed in excavations in the 1920s and is considered one of the oldest complete board games. And so I just think that this quote really emphasizes the idea that there was such a simple board game like the Royal Game of Ur when you think about how we transition into the world of board games today, that's pretty amazing. Thank you.